American Idol. 7 o'clock Idol, Wednesday on Fox 9. How to spot a drowning victim, Wednesday at 9. Next on Fox 9 News at 9. 26 years after Super Bowl 26, the big game will be coming back to Minnesota. It was very nerve-wracking but exhilarating to get this. An exclusive story tonight concerning the Jacob Wetterling case. Police now interviewing two suspects who are already in jail. A bus engulfed in flames rolling down the road comes inches from hitting a fire truck. Plus, on this Super Bowl day, we have a one-of-a-kind garage sale to tell you about. If you need a, a beaver trap for live trap beavers, right there. The grand tour from Vikings legend, Bud Grant. And now, Fox 9 News at 9. We are pleased to announce that Super Bowl 52 in 2018 will be played in Minnesota. Congratulations. <laughs> The wave of excitement. The Super Bowl coming back to Minnesota in 2018. The new Viking Stadium will host the big event in just its second season. Hi, everyone, and thank you for joining us tonight. Minneapolis hosted its first Super Bowl back in 1992, but we now know it won't be our last. Yeah, and it's a bit of an upset. The Twin Cities beating out New Orleans, a favorite looking to host its 11th Super Bowl. Fox Nights Paul Bloom live at the site of the big game. And, Paul, it doesn't matter if you're a fan or not. This is a pretty big deal for us. Jeff, you think about it, the Republican National Convention in 2008, Major League Baseball All-Star Game this summer, and now Super Bowl 52 in 2018. A very special, incredible run of national, if not global, events right here in our backyard. Of course, we still do need that stadium. That's going up behind me, right on track for its opening in 2016. And while the publicly financed stadium does have its detractors and its critics, Today was definitely a day to celebrate. It is hard to imagine, but this canyon of concrete pillars in downtown Minneapolis will one day be home to sports' ultimate event, the Super Bowl in 2018. This is our opportunity to shine on a nationwide and a worldwide platform and to brag like crazy about how great we are for the next four years. Mayor Betsy Hodges wants a no vote on the publicly financed billion dollar purple football cathedral now its biggest cheerleader. I want to make sure we're making the best we can out of the public investment that's being made over in downtown East, and certainly the Super Bowl is the most. This game-changing stadium was built for the bold, by the bold, and ready to be showcased at the boldest event in the world, the 2018 Super Bowl. This sleek, epic video, part of a multimedia pitch to NFL owners to bring the sport's biggest game to frozen Minnesota in the dead of winter. It worked. By secret ballot, the league selected Minneapolis over Indianapolis and New Orleans on Tuesday. Vikings ownership, ecstatic. We're very excited. We're very grateful to the owners that gave us this opportunity to host the event. And I know the host committee did a great job, and we had the entire state. We know behind us as we came in here, and it was very nerve-wracking but exhilarating to get this. This is the springboard that will absolutely take Minneapolis to the next level. Uh, we all know that we're a world-class city. This is our great opportunity to show it off. What does it mean to you? What does it mean about your hometown? I think it's great for Minneapolis. I think it's going to be great for the Vikings to showcase our new stadium, given the public funding for it and the idea that the community around here wanted it and that they're going to have the influx of the financials and the money coming in from out of state. It'd be great. As for the potential money coming into the region, the state's Department of Economic Development tweeting out some big numbers. The big game potentially bringing in upwards of $324 million to the local economy. And while some experts strongly dispute those figures, Mayor Hodges vows that local taxpayers will not be on the hook for the mass celebration that is the Super Bowl. We know that there might be some incremental costs, but there's a host committee that's doing private fundraising that is going to be paying for those incremental costs. So to the taxpayer, the, there should be no cost. City leaders said today that Major League Baseball's All-Star Game in July will serve as a, quote, dry run to get ready for that huge event, the Super Bowl, in just a few years. Of course, not just this construction behind me of the stadium. You've got downtown East under construction as well, as well as a brand new Nicolette Mall. All of it said to be ready by 2018. And topping it off, Jeff and Kelsey, city leaders talking about hosting the City of Lakes Lopet Ski Festival and that wildly popular crash ice skating event right around that Super Bowl time in February of 2018 to maximize visitors here to our region. 
Reporting live from downtown Minneapolis tonight, Paul Bloom, Fox 9 News. That's going to be a heck of a week or so. Well, the last time the Vikings made a presentation to the NFL to host the Super Bowl was back in 1989. Minnesota. Super Bowl 26. Fire and ice. Yeah, the old ice <laughs> castle over there in St. Paul. There weren't as many high-tech 3D graphics or shots of a billion-dollar stadium, but it still got the job done. The Vikings ending up beating out Detroit, Indianapolis, and Seattle to get Super Bowl 26 in 1992. And take a listen to part of their pitch. With the field narrowed to four, Minnesota is proud to take the foremost position. We'll build for you the biggest ice castle that any of you have ever seen. It was loud in the Metrodome in 1992. Pat Summerall and John Madden called the game, and the halftime show was Gloria Stefan, along with Brian Boitano and Dorothy Hamill, doing a figure skating routine. Hey. Yeah, that was uh, one wild night at the Metrodome. The Redskins won the game, by the way. Uh, from bobbleheads to animation. Amazing. <laughs> How far we've come. And you know, it's interesting because that year Fox had a live broadcast of In Living Color to sort of compete with mm -hmm. the halftime show. Right. And then after that, the big halftime shows started popping yeah, up. Yeah, nobody turns the channel anymore. In fact, yeah. a lot of people tune in for it. Mm -hmm. Well, 25 years after he was abducted, Fox 9 News has, uh, News has learned police are doing another round of interviews with suspects in the Jacob Wetterling case. And they're starting with a couple of suspects who are already behind bars. Tom Lydon here with this exclusive report. Tom? Guys, for the last six months, the Stearns County Sheriff's Office has been actively retracing the Jacob Wetterling case, mostly because of a blogger who has been connecting the dots to other cases. But now we've learned the investigation is picking up steam with prison house interviews with two men, a father and son, whose names have come up before. With its flags along Main Street, Painesville is a small town even Norman Rockwell could appreciate. And now it finds itself at the epicenter of a 25-year-old mystery. All because of five attempted and actual child molestations in Painesville, occurring two to three years before and 40 minutes away from where Jacob Wetterling was abducted. And Fox 9 News has learned these two Painesville men, Delbert and Timothy Huber, father and son, are once again under the microscope. If their mugshots look familiar, it's because they murdered school teacher Timothy Larson on his father's farm near Belgrade, all because of an argument over $50. Delbert Huber pulling the trigger, pleading guilty, his son Timothy convicted of second degree murder. Fox 9 News has learned Stearns County Sheriff's detectives plan on interviewing the Hubers this week in prison to see if their story has changed. Both men were looked at 25 years ago in the Wetterling case. Why? We don't know. But the sketch of the Wetterling suspect from a convenience store clerk does bear a striking resemblance to Delbert Huber. If Delbert Hubert is in fact a suspect in the disappearance of Jacob Wetterling or any of the Painesville Five cases, detectives more than likely would like to search his home for evidence. And therein lies a problem. There is no home left. Satellite imagery from a couple years ago shows a significant farmstead on the outskirts of Painesville with a main house and several other structures. Come to find out, even the man the Hubers murdered had his suspicions. In this letter written three years before he was killed, Tim Larson writes to Timothy Huber, I have listened to you talk about your problems frequently and how others accuse you of abducting Jacob Wetterling. But I chose to believe the best of you and in your innocence. Fox 9 has not been able to independently corroborate the letter's authenticity, in part because the man who wrote it is dead. But apparently the Hubers aren't the only lead detectives are working. Stearns County Sheriff John Sanner telling us by email, we have received a number of calls or leads identifying anyone that has looked or acted suspiciously in that area over the past 25 years. And obviously Delbert Huber would fall into that category. The sheriff implying there may be other suspects they're looking at as well. Many of the same suspects, apparently, they've been looking at for 25 years. As always, investigators say if you have information they want to hear from you, you can call 320-251-4240. That number, answered by a person and not a recording, will also post that number at myfox9.com. Guys, back to you. All right. A lot of talk on that case right now. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Tom.
Well, for the third day in a row, Maple Grove police have continued their investigation at the home of Amy Panyak. She's the 13-year-old who disappeared back in 1989. Tonight, police are requesting our interview we did with Amy's mom on Monday. Scott Wasserman joining us. So, Scott, why do they want it? Yeah, that's a very good question, Jeff. Uh, police won't tell us, only saying it's part of the investigation. It is Fox 9's policy not to release unedited interviews, and police would need a court order to get that interview. Tonight, police do continue that search at Amy Panyak's parents' home. Police still not saying why they are there or what they are looking for. Now today, we did obtain documents that show police calls to the home over the past couple decades. Interesting to note that Amy's parents reported her missing three times in the months leading up to her disappearance. It was uh, reported a um, uh, runaway, rather, and it was August of 1989 when he adopted, the father did, Marshall Midden, he adopted Amy, says he stopped at a gas station in Osseo to use the restroom. When he came out, Amy was gone. So why do Amy's parents believe she was taken and didn't just run away? I asked Susan Panyak that question this afternoon. If she's gonna take off, she's gonna pack a bag, take the money downstairs that was in her wallet and go. Tonight, police do say they are looking at all scenarios, including that Amy did indeed run away. They also reiterated that they don't know if she is alive or dead. Police say they'll continue to be at the home at least until Friday, possibly longer. Guys, back to you. All right, Scott. Still ahead, looking to own a piece of Vikings history? Yeah, how about something right out of the garage of a Vikings coaching legend? We'll tell you about the home of Bud Grant and his garage sale coming up next on Fox 9 News at 9. Diamonds, the jewelry exchange, has half-carat solitaires for $4.99, one-carat $9.90, two-carat solitaires for $19.90, and one-carat studs are $5.99. We have most sizes and grades of GIA diamonds, guaranteed the lowest price. Buy direct, the jewelry exchange in Egan. Have you been in everyone's jewelry store? They're in every Pawn America. We have it all, a real World Series ring. Would you love a platinum Rolex? Like new lawnmowers, $89.99. We've got fishing gear. Or how about this tenter, the mosquito trap? <laughs> We've got tons of stuff. What I'm trying to tell you is that it's really important that you get in here. America. Ready, set, up your MPG, lower your payments. It's the Memorial Day sale at your local Honda dealer. You win with more for your trade, plus low payment and financing offers. Accord, Civic, CRV, Odyssey, and Pilot. And Honda wins trophies for most trusted and best overall brand again, earning more top Safety Pick Plus awards than any other brand. Hurry, the Memorial Day sale ends soon at your local Honda dealer. Shop Honda.com. Yes, I'm a smoker. And yes, I'm aware I should quit. I get pressure from everyone I love and everything around me. Smoking is really, really bad for you. Yet sometimes that pressure alone is enough to make me want to light up. The new Quit Plan services. No judgments, just help. With free patches or gum, free text messaging, emails, phone coaching, and more. All without lectures. Call or visit quitplan.com. You're a great cop, and we need you. There it is. We're looking at a full-scale gang war. Your job is to protect the family. Uh, Our family took care of you when your father died. We never turned our back on you. We want to be partners. I need you 100% honest. Is gang related. Thursday at 8 down. on Fox 9. Did you know that Fox at 10 is on right before Modern Family? Greatest news ever. We have a modern newscast. This is my new favorite show. Flip over a little early and come hang out with us. I did it! <laughs> we think you'll like what you see. Many Bosnians getting a first-hand look at the damage left behind by massive flooding there. At least 40 people have been killed after days of heavy rains and rivers that overflowed. Authorities in Serbia have ordered the evacuation of two villages along the Danube River. Over in Bosnia, many are coming back to their homes to find kitchens and bedrooms covered with mud. Well, it's been one year since that devastating tornado destroyed the town of Moore, Oklahoma. 
Yeah, the image is still very difficult to look at as 24 people were, were killed in that storm. The EF5 twister carving out a 17-mile path of destruction in the heart of Tornado Alley. The community still very much in recovery mode today, building a brand new school to replace one where seven children were killed. We want a storm shelter at every business in every place in town that people can get in and, and be safe. People witness the resilience, the determination, the courage, the strength, the love, the compassion of our fellow Oklahomans. Yeah, courage is right. The new school is being built on the same site with a new safe room shelter being installed inside. Back home, Governor Dayton signing two more big bills passed by the state legislature last week. One being a $103 million bill it's a tax bill to send bigger property tax rebate checks to qualifying homeowners and farmers. He also signed a billion-dollar bonding bill that will build new classroom centers at the U of M and Minsk U campuses. The bill also adds money for local road and bridge repair and expands civic centers in three Minnesota cities. You can make up whatever theory you want, but when there are 159,000 more people working in Minnesota today than there were in 2011, and when Minnesota is the fifth best state in the nation in terms of growth in the GDP, uh, it's pretty hard to argue with success. Senator David Han argues that the budget enacted when Republicans were in the majority is what balanced the budget and that Democrats raised taxes by $2 billion. The governor also signing a law today ordering railroad and oil pipeline companies to help pay for programs to prepare cities for emergencies. It means the state can collect up to $2.5 million a year from companies operating in Minnesota. The money goes to first responders to help prepare for possible derailments and toxic spills. Earlier this year, the Fox 9 investigators reported that many towns are not prepared for those types of disasters. Well, lots of Super Bowl talk, of course, today, but not all is good news for the National Football League right now. A group of retired players are suing the league for supplying them with powerful painkillers that led to serious health issues in the long run. The players claim the league handed out the drugs illegally with no prescriptions or warnings of any side effects. Eight players are listed in the lawsuit, including former Super Bowl winning quarterback Jim McMahon. Almost fitting that on a day when Minnesota is celebrating the Super Bowl announcement, we get to check in on a Viking legend. Yeah, the one and only Bud Grant. About to do what a lot of us do when we just have too much stuff. The Hall of Fame coach is holding a garage sale. The Fox Nights' Bill Keller has a preview. Bill? Yeah, this is something you could only see in Minnesota, a Hall of Fame coach having a garage sale. But when we walked up to his house in uh, Bloomington this afternoon, there we found Bud sitting in the driveway pricing things just as he has done for the past 10 sales. He says this one will be his last, but he promises it will be his biggest yet. And as you look through all the stuff laid out there, everything has a story and a price. We're loading up here. If you are looking to own a piece of Minnesota Vikings history, if somebody's into this. Why not go right to the legend himself? One of the old seats out of the out of the Metrodome, and you know, I'll, I'll sign it. Former head coach Bud Grant it works good. I know that. Doing a little house cleaning. There's going to that whole end of the driveway is going to be all Viking stuff. It'll be full of Viking stuff. Anything you want. Hats, T-shirts, jackets. Purple. Or how about a snowmobile helmet from the Hall of Fame coach? If it's been sitting in my closet for 10 years. Along with tons of Vikings memorabilia, there'll also be plenty of hunting gear from the avid outdoorsmen. They have duck decoys, goose decoys, turkey decoys, crow decoys. They need decoys, they'll be right out there in the yard. But there are a few rules. First, no early birds. The sale begins promptly at 5 o'clock Wednesday night. You can't get in the garage right now, I'll tell you that. So why such a late start? Because I want to get the people that are coming home from work got the money. It's not the people, the, the ladies that come at 8 in the morning with no money. And second, no haggling. And it's non-negotiable. You know, and you, if you can't, if you, if it's too much or you can't afford it, don't buy it. That guy over there will buy it. The hardest part? Deciding what to hang on to. They might want to keep it. And what to get rid of. Selling is the easy part. Decide what you want to keep and how long you want to keep it. I'm 87 years old. I'm not going to keep it much longer. 87 years old today. Happy birthday, bud. But sharp as a tack, he says, with six children, 19 grandchildren, and 10 great-grandchildren. It's really a massive family garage sale. In fact, when we got there, bud got the call and learned about 
the new Super Bowl coming back to Minnesota in 2018. And when I asked him what he thought about the NFL draft and how the Vikings did, he simply said, it's somebody else's job now. We posted all the details to that garage sale that starts tomorrow on our website, myfox9.com. Uh -huh. Oh, I got a feeling he's pretty excited about that. <laughs> what a character. You know, they don't nickname people Bud anymore. No. I probably knew three Buds in my neighborhood growing up. You say up. Bud around here, and there's <laughs> one and only. And happy birthday, Bud. Well, a Hollywood actor known for playing a cop on TV tonight is accused of murder. Plus, why a real cop had to make a quick call and jump off this bridge. All right, you've put the umbrellas away. Today turned out spectacular, and as we get closer and closer to the Memorial Day long weekend, you're really going to like the forecast. I've got it for you coming up here at 930. My name is Elizabeth. I'm in the paralegal program at Globe University. The thing I like about the paralegal program is that the instructors are in the legal field. They work with you on a personal level, but they treat you like a professional. Globe is different than other universities because it's more career focused. They've really prepared me for my future and the flexibility and scheduling made it a lot easier for me to be able to work full time and take classes. To learn more, visit globeuniversity.edu. Brightling, instruments for professionals. Fox Tomorrow, music's hottest acts can be found in one place. Idol's season finale, plus a special performance by the judges. And the winner of American Idol is... American Idol. 7 o'clock Idol, Wednesday on Fox 9. We walk in honor of our son Riken, a stroke survivor. I give a memory of my dad, Sam, who died of a stroke. I raise money to support the research that fixed my heart. On May 31st, we walk. We give. I live. We heart the heart walk. Join us on May 31st for the annual Twin Cities Heart Walk at Target Field. And help build a world free of heart disease. Being heart smart is important at any age. This winter, learn how cold weather can affect your heart. Lifting a heavy shovel or walking through thick, wet snow can strain the heart. Colder temperatures combined with physical activity increases the workload on the heart. Shoveling is a strenuous activity, so this winter we recommend you be aware of your body while doing outdoor activities and know the signs of a heart attack. Be safe this winter and be heart smart. Take Me to Regions. For more information about heart care, visit TakeMeToRegions.com. Go ahead, scan outdated headlines, but you won't get access like this. Is this true? Why, yes, it is. 6 o'clock Access Hollywood and 6.30 TMZ. Weeknights at 6 on Fox 9. In tonight's news wrap, an actor best known for playing a police officer on TV finds himself accused of murder. Michael Jace arrested on suspicion of killing his wife Monday during an argument. Investigators say Jace, who starred in the FX show The Shield, called 911 and told an operator he shot her. He's being held on a million dollars bail. A big scare in a Massachusetts neighborhood where a school bus smashed into a house. It happened just after 8 this morning. No one home and no kids on board the bus at the time, so luckily no one was injured. That crash is under investigation. Accusations of horrifying child abuse in Arizona. A father accused of dropping his one-year-old girl into a pool twice. Surveillance video from the mom shows the man throwing the baby face first into the air, then into yeah. the pool. I just want to hold her and let her know it's going to be okay and we are gonna, we're, we're going to get through this. This is only the second time. Police say the father has admitted to doing it, claiming he did so to teach her a lesson after she threw two dogs into the water and one apparently drowned. Well, a surfer in Hawaii is accused of trying to run over an elderly woman with her car. Police say 30-year-old Jill Hansen, who you see there, followed the 73-year-old woman back to her condo and then tried to hit her as she got out. 
a good samaritan stepped in to save the woman it's not clear why hansen was going after that elderly woman in the first place she's being held on a one million dollar bond some incredible video out of texas a police officer is forced to jump from a bridge to avoid a car the driver slamming into the police car pushing it toward the officer and forcing him to make the jump now he survived and is now recovering at the hospital Whew. The driver, an elementary school teacher, has been charged with intoxicated assault. Hmm. Still ahead tonight, more charges are coming to the Target Corporation. That's or changes, right. rather. All right, plus the temperature going up. And folks can't wait to get outside. What this means for campgrounds and other outdoor hotspots this Memorial Day weekend. Diamonds, the jewelry exchange, is a direct diamond importer and producer. Compare this top chain store's one carat solitaires for $3,900 with our certified solitaires for $1,990. Also, one carat solitaires for $990, two carat solitaires $1,990, two carat certified solitaires are $59.90, and one carat studs are $599. The jewelry exchange has most sizes and grades of GIA diamonds, thousands of mountings, and your diamond is set while you watch. By Diamond and Factory Direct, the jewelry exchange in Egan. IPR is now located on First Avenue in the heart of downtown Minneapolis. New space and studios ready for you to take creative control with degrees in music and entertainment business, audio production and engineering, sound design for visual media, and now offering live sound and show production. Learn more at IPR.edu. Have you been in everyone's jewelry store? They're in every Pawn America. We have it all. A real World Series ring. Would you love a platinum Rolex? Like new lawnmowers, $89.99. We've got fishing gear. Or how about this tenter, the mosquito trap? We've got tons of stuff. What I'm trying to tell you is that it's really important that you get in here. Stay connected to the community. Here's this month's Fox 9 Spotlight. This is a Fox 9 Spotlight, presented in partnership with Chrysler Jeep Dodge. In Judge Judy's court. You only have one chance to make a first impression. One side of the story is never enough. What are you, nuts? One big mouth gets you in big trouble. Trust me, you are done. And one dumb question brings an answer that's smart. You left out a word. Stupid. No wonder you've made her America's favorite <laughs> judge. I'm not just a pretty face. There's only one Judge Judy. This is my playpen. Weekdays at 4 on Fox 9. Up all night. Stay up on the latest entertainment news with TMZ at 3.30. Access Hollywood at 4. Then we keep the party going. With the Fox 9 early buzz at 4.30. It's glorious. Yeah. That's the perfect look. Mm -hmm. This week is glorious. The first time this year. Write this down. The but first yeah. time this year they've been happy. With no, 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 no. So we've been trying we to talk you off the ledge. You, yeah. You're the one we that every... the weekend was nice. You feel bad coming up here every day telling us how cold it's going to be. Well, I, well, I'm a pleaser. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, a peop I'm a people pleaser. You That's are. what I am. He's a lover, not a fighter. <laughs> That's me, yeah. baby. Uh, you know what? If you didn't like today, there was a bit of a problem. If, if you want to go back to, say, the Februaries of the world, then yeah. Yeah, maybe you are in the wrong state. I only say February because, of course, Super Bowl 52 announced today. Minneapolis, February 4th, 2018. Here's the past five years. 2010, 2011, they weren't bad. Yeah. Even 2012. Sure. It's the last two years that were a bit of a problem here. And in particular, this past February the 4th, a high of 11 and a low of one below. It's going to have folks from Miami <laughs> just freaking out. And it's kind of funny that that's the Are you saying goes. the Dolphins are going to be in that Super Bowl? No, no, just, oh. just your average Miami Boy. people. Yeah, because I'm a big Dolphin booster. No, you, you talk about a <laughs> prediction. Uh, no, it's just, you know, you get a lot of people from yeah. across the state, across the region, and across the nation. Mm -hmm. All right, here's Storm Vision over the last six hours. Very quiet weather in our neck of the woods. 
but areas to the south and to the southeast are having a big problem with at least a chance of severe weather in parts of Iowa and Illinois. For us, it was very quiet today. About an average start to the day, an above average finish to the day with a high near 78. Some parts of the region actually made that magical 80 degree number, but it was cloud cover through the late afternoon that finally cleared that gave us the chance to really warm up. 78 the high today in the cities, 82 a spectacular high for folks in Brainerd getting ready for the long weekend. At this hour, still incredibly mild. Duluth, Bemidji and Fargo in the 50s. Elsewhere at 60s, even low 70s for the metro. A nice clearing trend and a beautiful night. The best part about this time of year, no bugs. Mm -hmm. Absolutely the it's best part. about a week. <laughs> Yeah, uh, about a week or two, and then there's a problem. We do get some time to dry out after the record rainfall yesterday. Today, from fog to sunny and warm, plenty of sunshine all week long. The long weekend looks lovely, and I think some folks are going to be reaching for fans and air conditioners as we keep an eye on the long-range forecast in the next 7 to 10 days. Today, we were a little gloomy as the jet stream rolls right over our neck of the woods. Area of low pressure here tracking to the north. Area of high pressure developing over uh, the Canadian Prairie Provinces. Now, today was real warm. We were doing the fine dance here with that warm, cool dividing line, the jet stream. But into the day tomorrow, the flow around both of these pressure centers will bring cooler air into the region. The jet's going to drop slightly. But this area of high pressure is our weather maker. Sprawling across the northern plains in the upper Midwest, giving us very quiet weather for the remainder of this week as we get into the long weekend. Nice with three seas overnight tonight. Clear, calm, and cool. Nice windows open, kind of sleeping weather. Tomorrow, about 10 degrees cooler than where we topped out today. Still a nice day. Sunny, breezy, but slightly cooler with high, hazy clouds. Should see a nice milky white to the sky tomorrow. Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, more sunshine. Turn the winds out of the southwest, and look what happens to our temperatures here. Call it great, splendid, fantastic. Unbelievable as we head into the long weekend. Your patience will be rewarded. On Sunday night, a slight chance of thunderstorms. On Monday night, a slight chance of thunderstorms. But that ever elusive 80 that we haven't hit mm -hmm. since the end of September last year is still in the forecast for Memorial Day. All right. And See, you make I'm it, a pleaser. Yeah, I you, want to please people. You make it nice during the day. People can get out and do their thing. Yep. Totally awesome. Thank you. Totally. Wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> and we are going to continue to talk about the nice weather. There you go. The weather should be nice enough to spend this Memorial Day weekend outdoors. And for a lot of people, that means camping out at one of Minnesota's many campgrounds. Maury Glover joining us now with a warning on how to avoid a, a tragedy, though, this holiday weekend. What are you talking about, Maury? Well, guys, with the weather heating up, uh, campgrounds across Minnesota will be packed through the Memorial Day weekend. But a somber anniversary is reminding some campers how important it is to stay safe around the water. 14 years, yeah, we've been coming here for a long time. With Memorial Day just a few days away. Get some fishing going, some horseshoes, all about it. Chris and Alicia Kish are getting their camper ready for the holiday weekend. The atmosphere, the people, it's just great. But while the Elk River holds fond memories. It's high, but it's coming down a lot. It also has hidden dangers under the surface. It's a lot of fun when it's higher. You just got to respect it more because it can get scary. One of those scary moments happened last Memorial Day weekend when two-year-old Daisy Jo Holland disappeared while playing near the river and drowned while her parents were setting up their campsite. Sad. Sad. It was a miserable weekend for sure last year. With our recent rains, the river is about a foot and a half above normal, flooding part of the campground. Life jackets and buddy system. Just as soon as you get here, they, the older kids can go on the river and they, they know it. They've been coming here long enough, and the younger ones, you just put a life jacket on as soon as they walk up. The campground is planning memorial for Daisy Jo on Saturday, the first anniversary of her death. Well, you want to remember and take from it what you can. But the Kishes say keeping a close eye on young campers is the best way to honor her memory. Watch her kids. Why don't take your eyes off them for a second. Now to underscore what the man in our story said, the DNR says 10 Minnesotans could save, be saved every year by doing one thing, simply wearing a life jacket. Guys, back to you. Mm, yeah, so true. If you're heading outdoors this holiday weekend, be on the lookout. Ticks could be out in high numbers this season. 
The health department warns disease carrying ticks survived in larger numbers because they were insulated from the cold by all of our heavy snowfall. Field studies have shown large populations of the pest in central and southeastern Minnesota. The highest risk for tick exposure is typically from mid-May through mid-July. And a lot of Minnesotans will be hitting the lake this weekend, and the DNR wants to make sure it's smooth sailing for everyone. Just like Maury Glover was saying, the DNR reminding people to follow the rules and clean their boats to prevent the spread of invasive species like zebra mussels. But they also want to make sure boaters wear life jackets, as Maury was pointing out. The best way to keep everyone safe, follow the rules. We want boaters to think zero. Zero AIS violations, zero new infestations, and zero boating accidents. The DNR will have inspection stations to check boats at many lakes, but boaters are being asked to clean their rig and drain all the water from the bilge and live wells. Well, Target cans its Canadian chief, the retailer, fired Tony Fisher, the president of its Canada operation. In his place will be Mark Shinedley. He played a key role in launching new store formats like Target Express and City Target. Target's Canadian division has struggled mightily, losing $941 million in its first year of operations. This change comes two weeks after Target parted way with its CEO, Greg Steinhoffel. Another day, another major recall for GM. This time, the automaker is recalling 2.4 million cars and trucks, 1.3 million crossover vehicles with defective front seat belts. They include the Buick Enclave, Chevy Traverse, GMC Acadia, and Saturn Outlook from 2009 through 2014. Another 1 million sedans being recalled for ship cables that can wear out. That list includes the Chevy Malibu and Pontiac G6 from 2004 to 2008. The recall is expected to cost GM $200 million. And this is the 29th recall for GM this year. 13.6 million GM vehicles have been recalled since early February. Wow. Guns are now off the menu at Chipotle, the restaurant chain asking customers not to bring firearms into their stores after gun rights advocates brought military-style assault rifles into a Chipotle in Texas. Chipotle has traditionally complied with local gun laws, but now they think guns create a potentially intimidating or uncomfortable environment for many customers. Well, a flash mob unlike any other, and one that will really tug at the heartstrings tonight. Also ahead on Fox 9 News at 9, unbelievable video of a metro school bus going up in flames and nearly hitting a fire truck. That's coming up next, but first here's Randy with a look at what's ahead at 10. Kelsey, here's what we're working on for tonight's 10 at 10. His disappearance has captivated Minnesota for nearly 25 years now, and now two men are being questioned in Jacob Wetterling's case. What Fox 9 has learned tonight coming up. Plus, the NFL's biggest game is coming to the Twin Cities' reaction to today's Super Bowl announcement and what it could mean for Minnesota's pocketbook. Got a sneak peek at Bud Grant's garage sale. Yeah, you heard me right. Vikings Great is selling off some of his really good stuff. The memorabilia you can get your hands on coming up on Fox at 10. I'll see you then. Have you been in everyone's jewelry store? They're in every Pawn America. We have it all. A real World Series ring. Wouldn't you love a platinum Rolex? Like new lawnmowers, $89.99. We've got fishing gear. Or how about this tenter, the mosquito trap? <laughs> We've got tons of stuff. What I'm trying to tell you is that it's really important that you get in here. Got a special fishing trip or know some magic to catching fish? Share your stories on the Fox 9 Facebook contest page, and it could land you the big one. Nine winners will receive $100 in Wealthy Wally scratch tickets and a prize pack from the Minnesota Lottery. Don't let this be the one that got away. If you're looking for skin care that delivers results, it's finally here. Introducing MD Complete, the first affordable and convenient way to get dermatologist level results. In the past, you would need a complex skincare regimen and a prescription in order to achieve the results you would expect from a dermatologist. Not anymore with MD Complete. My skin is smoother, brighter, younger. Get visible results at mdcompleteskincare.com. Now available exclusively at Target. You're a great cop, and we need you. There it is. full-scale game war. Your job is to protect the family. Oh. Our family took care of you when your father died. We never turn our back on you. Go. Go. 
we want to be partners. I need you 100% honest. Gang Related, Thursday at 8 on Fox 9. We walk in honor of our son, Riken, a stroke survivor. I give the memory of my dad, Sam, who died of a stroke. I raise money to support the research that fixed my heart. On May 31st, we walk. We give. I live. We heart the Heart Walk. Join us on May 31st for the annual Twin Cities Heart Walk at Target Field. And help build a world free of heart disease. Did you know that Fox at 10 is on right before Modern Family? Greatest news ever. We have a modern newscast. This is my new favorite show. Flip over a little early and come hang out with us. I knew it! <laughs> we think you'll like what you see. Well, you got to see this. A school bus goes up in flames along a Maplewood highway ramp this afternoon. Yeah, pretty scary, and it was a scene that was anticipated to cause a lot of trouble. Fox 9's Iris Perez is on the story tonight, and Iris, who does the state patrol say this bus belongs to? Well, Kelsey, the school bus was a North St. Paul, Maplewood, Oakdale school district bus, according to Lieutenant Eric Roski. Fortunately, no one was on board when the bus went up in flames, but fire crews did have a tremendous close call on the scene. Rolling along the eastbound 94 and Century Avenue ramp in Maplewood on Tuesday afternoon was a frightful sight. At first it was pretty intense, wondering if there was kids in there and scary. A bus driver had just dropped off his last load of students and after noticing a burning smell, pulled the school bus over. And I ran outside quick, asked the bus driver was just coming off the bus and he was carrying his lunch pail, so it didn't look too threatening. The driver paused to watch his bus as Ron Hogan witnessed the entire ordeal. He says five minutes after the driver got off the bus. Just started in flames and then, then it escalated pretty quick from there. Yeah. Uh, flames just went through the whole cab. And, uh, block cars were driving by and the stoplight was red. Next thing you know, they were kind of backing up and cars were just sitting next to it. Fire Chief Steve Lucan says on the scene, his crew encountered a startling close call. They were in the process of uh, pulling out their inch and a half lines to make an attack on the bus and the bus decided to start coming down the uh, rampway. And the flame engulfed bus got within inches of his rig. Realized that, jumped in the truck and moved it quite quickly. And I'm very happy for that. And I was more concerned about our firefighters than I was the truck, but it was quite close. It's Luckily, the bus then steered itself onto the ditch. And within minutes, the chief says the fire was out. Fortunately, no one was injured. You hear of close calls of something like this, but in my 37 years, I can tell you I've never seen one or been there when it's been that close of a call, and I really don't want to see it again. Now, it could be up to 60 days before we learn the exact cause of the bus fire. All we know now is that the fire is believed to have started in the engine compartment. Kelsey, Jeff, back to you. Ooh, that was scary. Close call. A top advisor for President Obama heading to Phoenix to address allegations of mistreatment at veterans clinics throughout the country. Reports of treatment delays, in some cases possibly leading to patient deaths, creating all kinds of outrage. Last month, a former clinic director in Phoenix claimed up to 40 veterans may have died while waiting for treatment. Investigators are looking into those claims as the White House reacts. The president's focused on, in this matter, making sure uh, that we know all the facts and that we act on those facts uh, to uh, better serve our veterans. The White House hasn't made a uh, timetable about when those investigations need to be finished. A bad day for retailers on Wall Street as investors worry about consumer spending. The Dow dropping 141 points on the day after disappointing profits reported by Staples, Urban Outfitters, and Dick's Sporting Goods. The commissioner of the NBA says forcing Donald Sterling to sell the Clippers is uncharted territory, so the league should expect some obstacles. But Adam Silver believes the league is on the right path in handling Sterling, and it'll all be worth it in the long run. I know we're doing the right thing here. This is an unprecedented proceeding. You know, will there be bumps in the road? Presumably, yes. Yesterday, the NBA charged Sterling with damaging the league for making racist comments. A June 3rd hearing has been set where owners could vote to force him to sell the L.A. Clippers. Next month, she will compete against the best female golfers in the world at the U.S. Women's Open. It's not a bad summer vacation for an 11-year-old. Lucy Lee has become the youngest player in history to qualify for the U.S. Open. She'll be in the field after winning a sectional qualifier in California. And believe it or not, Lucy 
Not the youngest player ever at the Open, 10-year-old Beverly Kloss, who didn't have to play in a qualifier, did play in the championship back in 1967. That's incredible. Mm -hmm. Well, a five-year-old Indiana boy who lost his battle with cancer gets a funeral made for a superhero. Braden Denton died earlier this month of a brain tumor. So his mother wanted to give him a funeral that celebrated the things that he loved most, superheroes. Take a look at that picture. Paul Bearers at the funeral dressed up as Batman, Spider-Man, Superman, and so on. The picture was posted on Facebook by Braden's uncle and spread quickly across social media. It just chokes you up yeah. when you think of all of the videos of him being the superhero mm -hmm. for a day, throwing out the first pitch at the baseball game and everything this year. As the perfect way to um, say goodbye to him, too. Right. And we have another story tonight that's really going to tug at your heart. There's been a lot of flash mob videos over the years. We've seen them at big festivals and that sort of thing in subways, but this is one that will really grab you tonight. Amy was diagnosed with ovarian mm -hmm. cancer in 2012 after chemo and surgery. It looked like she was in the clear, but the cancer returned in October, and this time her diagnosis is terminal. So Amy's family and friends wanted to celebrate her 56th birthday in a way that None of them would ever forget. There's Amy in the box in the corner. Her reaction is priceless. They set up a flash mob in the backyard. Started with a couple of family members. Soon, as you see people coming in, surprising her. 50 people from five states join in on the surprise. They set up a camera to capture her reaction there, and she's holding true to her favorite quote, which translated from Latin means, while we live, let us live. No surprise, this is a viral video, of course, oh, yeah. tonight. And well wishes for Amy have been pouring in from all over the world. Yeah, it's a crowded backyard there. Great idea. It took 13 years to build the International Space Station, mostly because it took so long for the pieces to get into space. Yeah, but now a Florida company has developed a way to manufacture parts in space. Fox's Tom Johnson explains how. Uh, everything's good. You are looking at the future of mankind's efforts to live in space. Inside that clear box is a 3D printer destined for the International Space Station. California company Made in Space shot this video on a low-gravity test flight aboard a NASA jet. The printer will allow mankind to manufacture in space. Co-founder Jason Dunn spent college here at University of Central Florida. Go night. Business partner Aaron Kimmer is a University of Florida grad. One day we're going to go colonize other planets, and that won't happen until we can bring manufacturing along with us. One of the really cool things about 3D printers like this one at Lake Mary Base Neometrics is, say you need a wrench, or maybe a grabber, or perhaps you need a bolt and a matching nut. With 3D printing, well, you just make them. Something that will come in very handy on the ISS. They don't have a Home Depot, you know, right around the corner that they can go to. You know, duct tape is really an astronaut's best friend. Bringing manufacturing to space and putting a 3D printer on the space station could really change the way space exploration is done. You're going to be able to do a lot of repairs and fixes on the fly um, that you just couldn't do, couldn't do before. The printer also allows for extra room aboard cargo rockets when they blast off for the space station because those supplies that are made up in space won't have to be brought up anymore. Then a digital blueprint, uh, you know, a computer design of the part, and then our 3D printers will actually just build the physical hardware um, in space. All from a couple of Sunshine State alums who never imagined themselves changing the nature of space travel. That's a really good feeling. Tom Johnson. A really cool set. Fox 35 News. Those 3D printers are amazing. I know, I want one. <laughs> I think <laughs> make, we all do. Make me a cup of coffee. Despite the national attention, school meetings and new laws, it continues to be a problem plaguing our youth. Yeah, coming up, a story about one young girl and how her friends are rallying to send a message to other kids in Minnesota. Today was just a taste of what's to come as we look toward the Memorial Day long weekend. Campers, cabiners, I'm just making up a word now, aren't I? We got a forecast for you, even new cabiner coming up on Fox at 10.
Mom and dad might not rule the roost when it comes to spending money. According to a new survey, 70% of parents ages 35 to 49 base most of their purchasing decisions around their kids. Just over half of baby boomer parents said this was true when raising their family. Meantime, more recalls from General Motors. Can you believe this? The automaker pulling back now 2.4 million vehicles involving several models in the U.S. so far this year. GM has recalled more than 13 million vehicles. And listen up if you plan on warming up in the sun this holiday weekend. A new study by Consumer Reports revealing that only two out of 20 tested sunscreens actually provide the protection advertised on the label. And chocolate lovers try not to crack up over this news because for the first time in nearly 20 years, Hershey is selling a full-size version of its crackle candy bar. Until now, they were only found in those bags of miniature candy treats. So up until now, I've had to swallow the entire bag. No need. <laughs> That's business. I'm Neil Cavuto. Yes, I'm a smoker. And yes, I'm aware I should quit. I get pressure from everyone I love and everything around me. Smoking is really, really bad for you. Yet sometimes that pressure alone is enough to make me want to light up. The new Quit Plan services. No judgments, just help. With free patches or gum, free text messaging, emails, phone coaching, and more. All without lectures. Call or visit quitplan.com. Diamonds, the jewelry exchange, is a direct diamond importer and producer. Compare this top chain store's one carat solitaires for $3,900 with our certified solitaires for $1,990. Also, one carat solitaires for $990, two carat solitaires $1,990, two carat certified solitaires are $59.90, and one carat studs are $599. The jewelry exchange has most sizes and grades of GIA diamonds, thousands of mountings, and your diamond is set while you watch. By Diamond and Factory Direct, the jewelry exchange in Egan. My name is Samantha and I go to Globe University and I'm in the veterinary technology program. I think what I like best about it is the fact that you get to practice what you're learning. You get an interactive education, you get to be with animals and learn on animals. Then you have instructors there who are veterinarians, they're certified veterinary technicians already so they, they know what you're going to be experiencing. I've never once second guessed what I'm doing here, I love it. To learn more, visit globeuniversity.edu. Music's hottest acts can be found in one place. Idol season finale, plus a special performance by the judges. And the winner of American Idol is American Idol. 7 o'clock Idol, Wednesday on Fox 9. Want a reason to stay up late? Modern Family, TMZ, and Dish Nation. Awesome. Which is one big family. Oh, crazy as the celebrities we cover. Oh. Oh, yeah, I can relate to that. You could go to bed early. But then you'd miss all the fun. <laughs> Modern Family, TMZ, and us. Think of it as the land of 2,000 laughs. That's really funny. I think you're not getting any sleep tonight. Late night on Fox 9. They're having fun over there, but you know it's going to end in tears. Yeah, always does. Go ahead, scan outdated headlines, but you won't get access like this. Is this true? Why, yes, it is. 6 o'clock Access Hollywood and 6.30 TMZ. Weeknights at 6 on Fox 9. Friends and family say goodbye to a young girl who took her own life, while also sending a strong message about the dangers of bullying. Now, Fox 9's Karen Smolin spoke to them about how they're hoping to stop a similar tragedy from occurring in the future. Gathering for her funeral, they wore bright orange, Maddie Joe's favorite color, and really a shade that friends say represents her. The happiness just on her face, it just was priceless. When we were around her, she just was the sun that came into the room. And she was a free spirit of sorts, which for some reason made her a target for bullies. And family members say the words were vicious. What did they say? They're gonna hit her over the head with a brick. They're gonna come to her house. Just horrible stuff. She even confided in one of her teachers that it had all pushed her to leave Blaine High School. He tried to help the best he could. She had expressed to me that she had uh, been bullied at some level and um, I made referrals for her to administrators at the school. Maddie Jo took her own life last Thursday. She was just 16 years old. While there may have been several factors that led to her suicide, the message her loved ones went out there today goes to those who bully. Simply stop. Words hurt, and they hurt some more than others. 
Maddie Jo was vulnerable, her smile and laughter an apparent facade. And Maddie's pain ran a little bit deeper and uh, careless teasing that may not be intended to be so hurtful. Um, we just don't know the intention and how people are going to take things. Maddie Jo will be remembered for her positive impact, but friends and family also hope her story can prevent another young life from being taken too soon. And if anything can come out of this, I just want kids to know they're not alone, you know, that there's people to talk to. Other kids have to know to stand up for their peers and to uh, stand up to the bully, stand up to mean girls, to know when to say no. The Anoka School District says their hearts go out to family and friends of Maddie Joes. They say they take bullying very seriously, but could not answer any specific questions about Maddie Joes situation due to privacy laws. Karen Scullin, Fox 9 News. Have you been in everyone's jewelry store? They're in every Pawn America. We have it all, a real World Series ring. Would you love a platinum Rolex? Like new lawnmowers, $89.99. We've got fishing gear. Or how about this tenter, the mosquito trap? <laughs> We've got tons of stuff. What I'm trying to tell you is that it's really important that you get in here. Hey, Twin Cities. Here's what's buzzing in the Fox 9 community. Join the Minnesota Twins May 26th for the Barbecue Tongs giveaway. The first 10,000 fans will receive barbecue tongs. Visit mntwins.com for giveaways and tickets. Stop by select BMO Harris Bank locations on Saturday, June 21st to shred and recycle two boxes of your old files in support of the grand opening of Gilda's Club Twin City. Visit shredditforgildasclub.org for more info. What's Buzzin' is presented in partnership with Wisconsin Department of Tourism. Ready, set, up your MPG, lower your payments. It's the Memorial Day sale at your local Honda dealer. You will win with more for your trade, plus low payment and financing offers. Accord. Civic, CRB, Odyssey, and Pilot. And Honda wins trophies for most trusted and best overall brand again, earning more top Safety Pick Plus awards than any other brand. Hurry, the Memorial Day sale ends soon at your local Honda dealer. Shop Honda.com. Did you know that Fox at 10 is on right before Modern Family? Greatest news ever. We have a modern newscast. This is my new favorite show. Flip over a little early and come hang out with us. We think you'll like what you see. Bedtime is family time. Modern Family, weeknights at 1035 on Fox 9. The following is a sponsored program. KMSP is not responsible for the claims made by the sponsors. The following is a paid presentation for Focus T25, brought to you by Beachbody. It's about time, 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 time. The number one reason people have for not working out is they don't have time. I have four kids. I work 60, 70 hours a week. I don't want to work out for no hour. Are you kidding me? I, I don't have the time. No time to work out? No problem. Introducing Focus T25, the breakthrough in-home fitness program guaranteed to deliver over an hour's results in only 25 minutes. T25 was created by a guy who knows a thing or two about insane results. Super trainer, Sean T. I created Insanity, so I know what it's like to work out hard for an hour. And I know everyone doesn't have that much time.